Hello guys and welcome back to Wes Life, episode 21 now, a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is, hope you're having a, a lovely day, and I hope you've um, I hope you've had a good cup of tea today actually, because I've got a good cup of tea right now, you want to listen to this? Mm. Ah, that is delicious, alright guys, we're going to jump into this podcast now, we're going to jump straight in. Where's Wes? Hopefully I'm going to try and get this as short as I can, because I noticed last episode I waffled on way too much, but it was still good. If you've not watched it, go and watch it, it's good. Um, Yeah, right. Where's Wes? So, obviously, I've still been at uni this week, been getting on work, been plowing through that, feeling a, a very, I mean, uplifted, I guess, and confident about the workload that I've been given recently, and um, it's been going well. I've got a load... Well, I've got one assignment that I need to get done today, so I'm going to finish it off once I've recorded this, but it shouldn't take me too long. But yeah, I've been enjoying it recently, I guess, and um, the workload's not been too bad. But there's there's that. Um, open air work, obviously I've been getting involved in that. I went out yesterday to Lancaster, which was really good, actually. It, uh, the rain was a bit, well, it was a bit foggy and, I guess, wet, but we had a few people stop. Um, had some good conversations, gave out a few John's Gospels, and I felt, yeah, I felt like it was worth it, and went out and had a good time. And then afterwards, I actually got invited to this couple's house, and it was, um, it was really nice, actually. I'd, I didn't expect to be invited, but I went, I was, I was anyway, and it was this Mexican couple, and they made Mexican food for us, and I didn't, I didn't think we were having a free course meal, but we did, and it was delicious. We had, um... Started off with this tort- tortilla soup. Um, never heard of it, never had it before, but it was really this really nice soup, and it had like tortilla in it and avocado and halloumi. And, oh man, it was delicious! It's probably the best soup I've ever had in my entire life. And then after that, we um, well, I actually I when they was like bringing stuff over, um, I was I was taking like extras because if I was like, oh, it's only polite. And then I, f- I was pretty full after that. And then they brought out this massive plate full of like, it's like some rice and vegetables. And then there was like a load of chicken with this peanut sauce. Oh my days, it was delicious. And we had loads of um, tortillas again with that. But yeah, that was like such a hearty, wholesome meal. And then after that, we had a cup of tea and Mexican cheesecake. Um, I don't know the actual name for it, but it was amazing. It was Reminded me a bit like a creme brulee, because on top it was a bit like burnt, I guess, and crystallised, or it felt like that, and it was delicious. Um, I've never had a cheesecake like that, but I'd love to have some again. So, if you got a cheesecake, Mexican cheesecake, and you want to share it, get in touch with me. I'd love a slice. So that was yeah, that was yesterday. Um, as usual, been playing board games again. Been doing board games nights, and that's been good. Been playing my new games. Um, D and D was has been going on as normal. We've a- actually one of the lads. He's, he said he's going to try and uh, start a new campaign, and it's, he's going to make a Star Wars D and D campaign. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to that, and I can't really wait. That should be good. So I think that's where I've been this week. Um, Not been out anywhere exciting, I guess. Oh, actually, yesterday I did. Yesterday evening I went out to meet some friends in um, Bursko. That was a really nice time. We um, just chilled out, played some games, ate some food. It's just really nice to meet up with people and, you know, just catch up and things like that. So, yeah, it was, I'd say it's a pretty good week so far, to be honest. That's Wes, uh, where's Wes? Not Wes says, where's Wes? All right, we're going to jump into Wes Says now. As I did say, I'm going to try and keep this short. I'm a bit busy today, to be honest, and um, I don't want to waffle on. But I've I've been um, not necessarily running out of topics, but I've been a bit like, couldn't think really. I was like, oh man, I don't know what to talk about. So a friend asked me to, ta- to talk about um, predestination and stuff like that, and I thought, well, like I said, I, I've already spoke a bit on that. It's in episode 10. If you want to go back and watch that, go and give it a listen. Then they asked me if I could talk about, um, right, let me have a look, it says here, like, as as a Christian point of view, how we should be spending money and looking at materialistic things, um, and then she also asked if I could talk about 
um, how we should be serving God and looking at how God calls us to serve um, abroad or in our own towns and cities and how to know where God actually wants us to serve. So I said I'll I'll um, share from my point of view what I think on these uh, topics and I thought it would be a good one to chat about. So we're getting to the first one about money and you know last night I was actually talking a bit about money and stuff like that and I think money living in the UK um I see that so like most people are bothered about money and they're bothered about you know what the the bills are going to pay and um ah sorry just had a little sip of my tea bothered about the bills and materialistic things like comment kind of said and um you know like where they're gonna get money for food and all this and different things and everyone's stressing out about money a lot of people are in debt and i don't know it's just a bit of a crazy world but then i look i look at other countries and there's people where they've barely got anything they've barely got any kind of money or anything like that but yet they don't seem like they're worried and they just seem quite happy and um I feel like if our country was a bit more like that and people weren't as worried and people didn't stress about it, then our country would probably be a lot happier because at the minute it's not a really... I don't see this country as a happy one, to be honest. I see it as a bit of a miserable one. Um, everyone's miserable these days, aren't they? Well, not everyone, but, you know, everyone's moaning about summer and money is a big one that people moan about and, like, bills and all sorts of rubbish. <laughs> well, they're not rubbish, but you know what I mean. And so... It is a massive one. So I think as a Christian point of view, we shouldn't necessarily um, be looking into like the materialistic kind of things. I mean, it's not it's not a bad thing. It's not bad to go out and have them. But it's not always, you know, these things aren't always going to provide us happiness and that kind of thing. But I've got some verses anyway that I want to share from them and talk about so the verse the first verse that i've got is actually from hebrews 13 and it's verse 5 and this is from the esv version by the way i just like this one a bit but i normally uh, i read from the new king james um yeah it says keep your life free from lo- from love of money and be content with what you have for he has said i will never leave you nor forsake you so i feel like this verse here Right at the beginning, it says, keep your life free from the love of money and just be content with what you have. That is, in a lot of cases, easier said than done, just being content with whatever you've got. But it is a thing that as Christians, we should be trying our best to put that into practice and just being content. And, you know, that we see that throughout, like, think about um, the actor uh, Robin Williams. He... Um, he took his life, didn't he? But he he said some, a quote. I don't really I'm not get it written down. I'm just thinking about this on the spot. But it's basically about. Um, I'm sure it was him anyway. About he wishes everyone can have money and fame and all that, and then you'll see that it doesn't provide happiness. Um, I think it's him. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I feel like no matter how much you try and go out and get all these things in the world, they're not going to provide you any happiness at all. And As a Christian, the only thing that can bring us true joy is Christ and God's word. And that's what we should be doing. We should be spending time daily in God's word. And our our love for these things, you know, it'll be, in a sense, it'll be replaced. If these things we have a love for him, we replace it with God, a love for God. That's where we want to put all our, I almost, in a sense, our money into our, our time into. And so materialistic things. They wouldn't even be, we wouldn't be bothered about them. And, you know, if we look about this world as being a temporary world, you know, one day when we do leave and we enter into our eternity, if we're going to be with the Lord, these things ain't going to matter to us anymore. We're not going to bat an eyelid over any of them. Therefore, we shouldn't really be bothered about them. But I am saying it's not, not a bad thing because, like, for example, I, shoes, like, I I actually, I own like a few pairs of shoes. I ain't going to lie. I do like having shoes. Um, But I'll never buy cheap shoes. I'll always buy, you know, good shoes. But that's because I want my shoes to last. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But 
I I think I shouldn't be going out buying loads of shoes, but that is something that I do enjoy doing. Um, which I'm saying, it's not a bad thing, but one day I'm not going to be able to take them shoes with me, am I? So, what's the point? But, um, yeah, this is a challenge to myself as much as it is to anyone else who... Well, I hope you can be challenged by this and any Christians listening. But, yeah. Um, so, I think that's kind of the materialistic thing. And um, I've got another verse here, actually. It's from it's Matthew 6, and it's verses 19 to 21. And it says, well, this is from the New King James, by the way. All the other verses are from the New King James. It's just that other one, what was ESV? So this says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, though your heart will, all, will be also. And I feel like that's what I was kind of saying. I've got, you know, like if we... We can't we can't go away and we can't um you know spend a lot of time and effort and money into getting these things for us on this earth where they're just gonna they're just meaningless and when we're gone we can't take them with us but what we should be doing is putting all our time and our effort into laying up treasures for us in heaven because them things are gonna last for us they're gonna last because it's an eternity it's not not a, a short time or a long time and then it ends. It's eternal. It goes on forever and ever and ever. And I feel like if Christians live in that mind that um, these things aren't going to last, we're not going to have them one day, then people will be getting rid of so much, won't we? We're getting rid of so much. I'd be getting rid of loads. You know, I also I talk about board games. I've got a load of board games. If I really was trying to live in this mindset of storing up treasures in, in heaven... These things, I would just, you know, almost just throw them away. But I'm say I'm also saying it's not wrong to have these things in the same sense. It's not wrong to have them. But don't, we shouldn't be living for them. We shouldn't almost be like idolizing them or worshiping them. And like, you know, like I said, living for them. We should be living for God and putting him above everything else. And I feel like, yeah, that's a good thing as an idol. If we make these things more important than God and our love for God, then that's where our, our issue is because our heart is not in the right place then. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea now. Mm. You know, I, I often, as I was saying, I go into the open air and um, the talk that I give quite often, I always ask, have you got everything that you need in life? And I talk about different things that I feel like people are always going after. Um, so, you know, well, that people that things people uh, things that people want in life. So, you know, like um, money, house, um, good health, friends, family. You know, these kinds of things. But I'm asking these questions, and I'm trying to draw people in and asking them, "Have you got these things in life?" But then what I do is, at the end of it, I share um, a verse from Mark and it's from Mark chapter 8 and it's verse 36 and it says for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul and so I feel like that that verse is one that I share and I feel like it's another one here um, for the the person who isn't a Christian now we might be listening I feel like if you go away and you go and you try and get all of these things you go away you try and you know I don't know get the nice fancy car get a mansion whatever and just have everything. At the end of the day, you've gone away. You've gone and got all these things. So it's like, all right, yeah, have you got everything now that you need in life? But then at the end, I'm saying, hang on a minute. Look at the Bible. Look at what it says. It says, what will it profit you if you go away? You go, you go and get all these things. You spend so much time working hard. You get them all. But then you lose your own soul at the end of it. And I feel if we, are, if we become blind to the world and the things that the world offers us we've lost the point because we should be more worried about our etern our eternity and where we're going to spend our eternity and you know it's a it's a serious one we should be thinking about but yeah as a christian i 
I would just repeat myself, like, we should be, our love should be for God more than anything else and of the things of this earth, and that's where our focus should be and our time and energy and money should be spent on that, I guess. Um, so that's money, and I, I hope that is, um, well, provided you with some kind of answer. It's my answer, at least, and it's based on what the Bible says. And so I hope it's helped you. I'm going to move on now to the next part of the question where um, a friend asked me about um, serving God. And wait, let me just repeat the question here. I got it on a message. It says, um, how we should spend our time serving God or looking at how God calls us to serve abroad or in our own towns and how to know where God wants us. Well, mm. I feel like this is a bit of a harder one for me to answer um, in some sense, but also a bit of an easier one, well not an easy one, but you know, right, I'll just give my points anyway, so I've got, again, I've got two verses for this, the first verse that I want to share is actually from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse for, uh, verse 15, and it says, um, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear and i feel like this is a great one because it says always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason a reason for the hope that you have and i feel like as christians every day we we should be living as though well we're, we're ambassadors for christ aren't we we should be living um as as a salt and a light to those around us, we should be living a different a different like life in a sense. And especially in these in the UK, we need to be living that people notice a difference in us and they notice the ways that we are different. But most importantly, when someone ever comes to us and they and they ask us about while well, they ask us about these kind of things, like the verse says, we should always be ready, always be ready to tell them about the hope that we've gotten why we're um different and it's only through christ and what he's done for us and we should be always ready to do that so i feel like that's the first step of um you know kind of almost evangelizing i guess and serving god um i feel like the next thing i should be talking about is um wherever you are you can always um you can always serve god so where it does it doesn't matter where you are you can always serve God where you are. And you know I mean some people will probably disagree with me some people might agree with me, with me to some extent. But the way I know well a few years ago I'll say my viewpoint was va very different to what it is now. A few years ago when I first became saved I was just like right yes I want to get out there I want to become a missionary and I want to just lead a load of people to Christ and yeah, I really wanted to go away to a different country like Papua New Guinea or the Philippines or anything like that. And that's what I wanted to do. But now as I've gone on and I've, you know, I've started to grow more, I see the real need for my for things in my own country. And in a sense, I almost see other work, like missionary work, a bit of a... If people are going over there when there's a need where they are, I see it as a bit of a cop out. Now, don't get me wrong; there is a need for that. There's a need for missionary work, and there's a need for missionaries. But if people aren't willing to first serve in their own hometown where the need is, then what's the point of them going over to other countries? Because we first have to be serving where we are. We should be serving where we are at all times. So if you're there as a Christian and you're saying, right, I'm, I want to be a missionary, I want to go to this country or whatever, but you're not doing any serving in your own area, your own town or city, wherever it may be, I've, I think that's a massive cop-out. Like, what are you doing? But now, yeah, my, my mindset is I see a massive need for where I am and the work in the UK, especially the North West and Wigan, because, yeah, Wigan is a very needy place. And so now my heart is more, is on that. And you know I'm, I'm doing what I can to serve you, and I'm going out. Well, I will say a few years ago, just so you know, just because I go out and I do open air work or I do 
tracting and anything like that i do missions work it doesn't mean that i've like i'm um almost better i guess or like above anyone else because we can we can serve god and we can evangelize in our daily lives through many different ways even if it's just being nice to someone or loving someone inviting someone over to a, for a meal or anything like that it's ways that we can serve god and be you know loving to people it doesn't necessarily mean we have to go out and preach to people or anything like that that is just a method that we can use and so no matter where we are it comes back to what i was saying that we can serve where we are and god wants us to do that um i've got another verse here that i can share with you this is from Mark 16, it's verse 15, and it says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And now, I personally think that we should be going out and sharing the gospel. If we are Christians, you know, it's a command for us. I've, I've no Christians who, they're, um, they'll stay in and they'll say, Oh, you know, it, I, I can't do that, or whatever it's you know they don't want to share the testimony testimony with people or anything like that and i've known um like people who you'd call them hyper calvinists who would say oh well if god save if god saves people then it doesn't matter if i go out or anything like that because ultimately it'll the lord will save who he wants to save and i think that's a load of rubbish because right here it's a command for us it's a command go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature if we're not being if we're not listening to that we're being disobedient but like i said it's not we don't necessarily have to go out and actually preach to people but if god has really made a difference in your life god has truly saved you even though it is difficult and it can be hard for us to go out and share the gospel um that doesn't mean we sh we can't do it because god's given us the ability to do it think about um Romans 1 verse 16 I think it says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes and so we shouldn't be ashamed you should be willing to go out and just share the gospel with people um, in many ways that we can now as for your question about how we're supposed to know where God wants us I think what we should be doing is we should be praying about it and we should be seeking advice from um, our elders um, who are in church and, you know, going to them and asking them about it and things like that. But I feel like if God wants you somewhere, then he's going to open and close the right doors for you. You've just got to trust in him and, yeah, just be really praying about it if your heart is in it and you've got a desire to do that a desire to be obedient and a desire to serve god then he will lead you to where you want where he wants you and i can't necessarily tell you what that's going to look like because that's where i said the question is a bit difficult because i i think only well to some extent i don't i don't know i think most people i've chatted to about this i feel like they've always had some kind of obvious clear sign and whatnot um as for myself i i strongly feel like god wants me to serve somewhere with it because a few years ago i was when i left school i didn't know what i wanted to do so i did it for my first year and i just thought oh, i'll do it because it's a, a good qualification to have i guess um i'll pray about it and f see if there's anything else i wanted to, wanted to do so i was doing that for the first year i was praying about it and um I actually went to a conference with New Tribes Mission called the Reach Conference. And I think it was like the last day I was there. Well, that, that conference was a massive blessing to me. And this is when I wanted to be going away and being a missionary. And I thought, yes, this is what I want to do. And on the the last day, they had a presentation up with like workers that they needed. And, and it was going in the order of what they needed them, to be honest. Um, I don't know why I said to be honest then, but it was. And it was... It was going up and it said like, oh, doctors, plumbers, electricians, teachers, nurses, whatever. You know, it was going in order. But at the top of the list, it said IT workers. And for me, that point was 
I just felt like, right, I've done a, I'm doing a year of this and I don't know what I'm going to do. But at that point, I just felt like God was telling me I, I should continue studying IT. So that's what I've, I've been doing since I've just been studying IT. And I don't particularly like it. Um, it's not it's not an area where I've got a massive heart for it. But I have got a heart for mission and I feel like there's a strong need for that. And so if I can then use that um, to serve and serve in IT... Well, through like you know, so through IT um, and mission, then that's what I want to do. And I don't know that that kind of sign or you know God speaking to you could be you know it'll be different for everyone. And I guess really, if you pray about it, you trust Christ, then it will become clear to you. And like I said, He'll open and close the right doors. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. But yeah, I think. I think that's all I've got to say really about that. Um, but we can be serving wherever we are. And it's what we should be doing really. Um, I hope I've not upset anyone or anything like that. I mean some people genuinely do have some kind of reason as to why they um, aren't able to um, go out and do certain things. But you know, if, you know, I used to be massively... Um, shy and i thought i you know i'd always struggle i never thought i'd be able to go out and open a open a preaching I, st I still find it really difficult but you know like romans 1 verse um 16 i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ and therefore if it's changed my life i should be willing to go out and share it shouldn't i and i feel like that's the mindset that i'm trying to live by um if it's made such a difference in me i'm gonna go out and share this message with people and so Anyone is able to do that, even if you're like, um, I don't know, if someone's, I don't know, injured or whatever and they can't really leave their house or anything like that, they can still do things to be a witness um, and, you know, through different methods, do different things, you, it could be anything, but, you know, we should be doing it. But yeah, I hope that's kind of given you some kind of answer to what I was saying anyway. Um, and really, yeah, we should be in prayer, spend a lot of time in prayer about where God wants us to be. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's the end of what I've got to say about that. Hope you've been able to take something from it. So that's the end of Wes Says. I'm going to jump into, um, what have we got next? Oh, we got the Q&A now. We got the Q&A, right, should we go into the Q&A? Right, okay. Um, this is question one. This is by... Johnny Richardson. Thank you, Johnny, for sending these in. You're sending them in every single week. So, uh, yeah, every single week you're sending one in. I love it, mate. I think you're the um, top, top contributor. And it says, Who would play you in a movie of your life? Oh, man. Who would play me in a movie of my life? Right, you know, actually, I thought about this a while back, right? I had this... Um, this movie that I wanted to make, well, it was a bit of a, I made up this like little script and I thought it'd be fun. And what it was, it was about the life of me. And um, I had this, I had this dog that was like one of them, what are they called? The, the dogs, right? The, the dogs were the big fluffy ears. They're like King Charles Spaniel or something like that. They got really massive fluffy ears. And I thought it was I'd have one of them with me, and a little frog. And now the dog and the frog, they could both talk, and I could hear them and I could understand them a bit like Doctor Doolittle or whatever. And I could I could understand them, but they hated each other a little bit. The dog hated the frog, and I was like, "Flip me, right? Get off the frog!" And I'm always like trying to separate the dog and stuff. And anyway, it was a bit of an idea that I had. I thought it'd be a good comedy film or whatever. And I was thinking, right, the dog would be voiced by Judy Dench. And then I said that the frog would be voiced by Seth Rogen. And then I thought, who could play me? And I was thinking about it. And I wanted Russell Brand to play me. And I don't know why, because I, I just, I don't know. I feel like Russell, Russell Brand to play me. Um, I mean... That was a film that I thought of anyway. Necessary. Well, yeah. I mean, if it was a film about my life, though, my life story, 
Oh man, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I might just say, yeah, go on, Russell Brand. Give it a good job. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of people don't like Russell Brand. But I, yeah, maybe I'd just say Russell Brand. There you go, mate. Play me in my film. Russell Brand, if you want to get in contact and you feel happy to make a film about the life of me, then please do. Alright, um... I hope, Johnny, you send me a message of who you think should play you in a film anyway. I'd love that. Right, next question. This is question two. It says, should I shave my head? And nobody's left a name. So, whoever you are, um, I think I would say... Spend a lot of time thinking about it, because I didn't just rush into shaving me head. I thought about it for a while. I mean, one... Actually, you know what? That's... I mean, I'm being a bit of a... A hypocrite, if you want to say. Because one day, when I woke up, I just really wanted to get dreadlocks. And I was like, flip me, I want to get dreadlocks. So I went out and, I, you know, I got dreadlocks. I didn't really... I didn't really think about it for ages. But I didn't regret it. It was really good. I, I enjoyed having dreads for ages, to be honest. Um... Yeah, I, didn't, I did want to shave my head for a long time, I guess, and I just couldn't for various reasons and situations. But yeah, um, think about if you want to do it before just shaving it. But I think anyone could uh, pull off the shaved head. You know what? If you're a girl, if you sent this, if you're a woman, a lady, whatever, and you sent this question in, Go for it, because I absolutely love Mad Max, and the woman out there, I can't remember her name, but she's got a shaved head, hasn't she? And she just looks epic. Like, she just looks so cool. It's just like, flip me, you got a shaved head, it looks sick. If you're a girl, just shave your head, and you just be confident about it. That's what I'd say. Just be confident and do it. If you're a lad, um, some guys, I don't think, can pull off the bald head. But I'd say, if you do want to... Not a bald head, you know, shaved head, whatever. If you do want to do it, some guys can suit it. If you've got a dodgy head, then maybe it's good to um, have a bit of facial hair first before you shave it. So that's my answer to whoever sent that message, but just go over it if you want to do it. Right, last question. I've only got three today, not many, is it? But that's good, it can be a shorter episode. Um, did you steal my laptop from Beef? Um, no, I did not steal your laptop. Um, so don't ask silly questions, Beef. All right, that is the end of the question, the Q and A, whatever. All right, I've got to say some wise words now, aren't I? Because I mean, yeah, anyway, guys, if you've got anything else you want me to add to this podcast, any kind of routine thing. Oh, Philip, I didn't put the pod, I didn't put the uh, fez on. Oh, sorry, guys, I didn't put the fez on. Right, the fez is here, though. Apologise about that, I didn't put it on. Uh, yeah, if you've got anything you want me to do, please send a message and let me know. And my wise words for you today would be... Um... You know what, I've talked about money and things like that. The Bible talks a lot about giving and, you know, you get so much joy out of giving than receiving. So this week, why don't you try and give to someone else or, you know, buy someone a meal, buy someone a coffee or something like that and just see how much joy you can get from it than receiving one, I guess. It's so much better to give than to receive. That would be my wise words to you, I guess. But thank you very much for listening, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this one. Um, send me any messages if you've, you know, if you want to ask me anything else, or you know, send me your questions in the link below. And if there's anything you disagree with, anything that I've said that you don't like, you know, let me know about that too. I'm always happy to hear about it. Happy to talk about these things. But other than that, hope you have a good week. Stay positive. Keep smiling. Um, see you in um, episode 22 I guess Lord willing ta -ra.